Hiker, author, and National Geographic adventurer, and Jennifer Farr Davis has hiked over 12,000 miles on six different continents. And in 2011, she set the fastest known time on the Appalachian Trail. And that record was broken in 2015. But Jennifer Farr Davis is here to tell us about her story and her book. Nice to see you, Jennifer. Thanks, Thanks for having for coming me. In. I appreciate it. So, first of all, okay. Doing the Appalachian Trail is like one of those things people want to do in a lifetime. Yeah. But yeah. you did it in, let me see, I took the notes, 46 days roughly. Yeah. Why? Well, I wanted to know what my best was. And it was my third time to do it. So traditionally, if you're going to hike it and not try for a record, it'll take five or six months. And I had had that experience. And honestly, I wanted to be a mom. And before that kind of took over my time and body, it was important for me to see what my body could do on the trail. And what's amazing is a lot of this is chronicled in this book, and I'll just pick it up here so that uh, we can see it. It's called uh, The Pursuit of Endurance, Harnessing the Record-Breaking Power of Strength and Resilience. Strength and Resilience. Yeah. Uh, two of those, those words encapsulate so much in the world of right. endurance and the spiritual aspect. Right. Tell me about how that factors in for you. You know, this book, I didn't set the record and want to write this book, honestly. Like, it's seven years removed, and what made me want to write it is I found that, you know, I'm not the same type of athlete I was seven years ago. I'm not going out crushing 50-mile days, but I'm a working mom of two young kids, and I use the lessons of going 50 miles a day all the time. All the time, and it's just a different application. So I think that resiliency and endurance is something we all need, regardless of what path we're on. And we're looking at some video of your, your running in this. Where was this? Uh, was this on the Appalachian Trail right here? Yeah, that's uh -huh. in my home. Um, that's actually the Southern Blue Ridge Mountains near beautiful. Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah. It is beautiful. That's awesome. And so green. We brought you some rain. <laughs> well, we You're needed welcome. it, Jennifer. We, uh, yeah, because things are getting really dry here. Yeah. Uh, but I do a lot of running and climbing myself. The, Colorado is just one of those meccas. Scott Urich came yes. along in 2015. Yes. Broke your record just yes. by a little bit. Yeah. Um, but you talk to Scott, you talk, there's so many people in this, in this, in this sphere of endurance, in the right. endurance world, uh, and you know a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, I really wanted to give an insider's perspective because I think it's a real disservice to these folks who come along and set records. People write about them, and they seem larger than life. And they're all such human, relatable people with stories that can inspire anyone, regardless of whether they're an endurance athlete or not. So I wanted to get to the vulnerability and not to the accomplishments of these individuals. And you've been traveling around Colorado for the last... Uh few days at least, right? Yeah. On a, a bit of a book tour. Right. Now where are you going with this? Um, yeah, we, we do love Colorado. We've hiked the Colorado Trail and done most of the Continental Divide in the state. Um, but the thing is, there are trails everywhere. There are good people everywhere. We love to explore. So now we're headed up to another one of our favorite places, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, uh -huh. and then down through Indiana and Pennsylvania. And then we'll get home, and the end of our book tour is the start of kindergarten for my daughter. Oh, how about that? Yeah. Well, that's fun. Yeah. Well, good deal. Thanks, Jennifer, for yeah, coming in this morning. And again, me. the book is called The Pursuit of Endurance. So maybe you want to pick that up if you're into this kind of stuff and take a look at the physical and the mental yeah. aspects of all this. All right, well, coming up, we all know how crowded the train, train cars can get at DIA. Well, they're thinking about adding more, so we'll talk about that in a few. And coming up at the 8 o'clock uh, hour, we will get to that.